Welcome back. This is going to be my full technical analysis for Monday, December 12th, 2020. And we are going to start by looking at the US dollar index. And as you can see, we have been rallying mostly all of this week. This is kind of more of the same. We have been rallying up towards the 20 and the 50 exponential moving average now for several weeks and actually months and uh, nothing has really happened. We have still, we're still on this um, um, downward trend and it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. I think next week we are going to go all the way down to 90. That is where we are most likely going to go. So we rallied a little bit today, but it, we did not manage to take out these previous highs. And that is an indication that we are most likely going to roll over from here on the Monday session or on Tuesday session. If you look at the technical indicators for the, for the US dollar index, they are looking promising, but we have not crossed any signal lines yet. So it may well be that the MACD just gets close to it and just rolls over and doesn't cross. And the reason why I'm so pessimistic for the US dollar index is because if you look at the four hour chart, you can see that we have tried to rally above the 50 moving average several times. And if we were going to break above this, then we would have done it yesterday, but we didn't. Um, it is also more apparent when we look at the one hour chart, we have just tried to test the 200 moving average just several times back here and here and here, all basically all day long. And we just have not managed to break the 200 moving average in the one hour chart. And that is a signal that we are just going to roll over here and head back to where these, towards these lows. Um, when you test something this often, it always breaks the other way. So technical indicator for the one hour chart are also looking more bearish than they are bullish at this point. So expect the US dollar index to fall. And that, of course, will have a positive effect on indices like the Nasdaq. Uh, on gold and also on, on other commodities, basically all of them. So let's look at oil. And we'll start by the one hour chart. And as you can see, we have um, rallied yesterday quite significantly, broke down, rallied a little bit today up towards 1747.3 and then broke down again. So this is not a major breakdown. Absolutely not. At this point, we are most likely going to witness a pullback towards this area here. So it's around 45. That is probably as low as this market goes. And I would not ask anybody to basically short this. It's a really bad idea shorting this at this point. If we break the 20 exponential moving average, probably also 50, then I would consider shorting this. But we have been in an uptrend ever since we were down here at 40, 33. So this market is is highly likely going towards 50. So we have broken down several times, once here, twice, three times, four times, and every single time we have broken down, we have found support and rallied. So it is just going to be more of the same. We'll probably break down here, rally again, break down until we hit 50. And then we'll basically see whether or not it is possible to start shorting this here. So of course, there are a lot of arguments why we shouldn't be here, more than there are for why we should be. So the fundamentals do not uh, not agree that we should be at this price level, but the market does. So if you look at the four-hour chart for this, uh, well, actually the one-hour chart, so we can see that we are creating a triangle pattern here for those that were part of the course today, you should recognize these pattern. So we can see that we are traveling into this corner here. And what most likely will happen is that we'll break towards the upside or we'll break towards the downside. At this point, I am favoring the upside in this market. The 50 moving average is underneath here. That is going to be more difficult to break through that than the 50, the 20 exponential. Technical indicators are turning around in this mark in the in the one hour chart, and that is most likely indication that we are going to break above 
this resistance line here and head towards these very highs of 47.7. That is highly likely that that is going to occur. So keep attention to the one hour chart. So let's look at natural gas. We can see that we have continued our rally, but this is also just more of the same. We have done this several times the last uh, few weeks. We can just continue here. Uh, from the top, we broke down, rally up towards the 20, broke down again, rally up to the 20, broke down again, and now we're rallying to the 20 again. And, well, I'm pretty sure most <laughs> many people were basically saying, no, this is going to rally here and we're going to all the highs. We didn't. We didn't do it here. We didn't do it here. And I'm pretty sure that we will not do it here. Destination for this is very likely down towards the 200 moving average. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we will not stay in this range here for some time. We can just see how long we were staying at this range for one week before we broke down. And that is probably what you should be looking for. If we stay here for a numerous amount of time without rallying up towards the 50, then that is a clear indication that we're heading towards the 200 moving average. So this is my target. I'm not interested in basically entering this market at all until we get down to the 200 moving average, if we get there. So let's look at uh, copper. Copper rallied yet again today, going to 3.622, which is absolutely enormous uh, for copper. And then we broke down again, all the way down to 3.49. At this stage, I would say that we are most likely going to go higher. So every single time we expect copper to break down, it just goes higher, higher, higher. Technical indicators for copper are, though, looking very bearish, very dire. So it is extremely risky to buy this here when you look at this. Um, and... On the other hand, it is very risky to sell this because every single time we get close to the 20 exponential, we rally. So at this point, I'm just going to stay far away from this. If we break down all the way down to the 50 moving average, I would be a buyer in this market. I probably want to be a seller. I've tried to sell this several times the last two weeks, but it has failed every single time. So, so I'm going to change my strategy and just wait until it falls significantly like here and here and then start buying this instead so let's look at gold so gold is just doing more of the same we are finding a major resistance at the 20 expansion moving average so it is becoming quite apparent that what is going to happen here we have this major resistance line above we have this major support line underneath and in between this, this major resistance line and the major support line, we have the 50 moving average acting as resistant and the 200 moving average acting as support and the 200, uh, 220 exponential right in the middle. So if we manage to rally all the way up to the 50, that is a plausible selling opportunity. If we rally up towards this major resistance line, even better selling opportunity. The same goes for the other side. If we rally, uh, break down towards the 200, it's a buying opportunity. Uh, break down towards this major support line, also a buying opportunity. So we're most likely going to see just more of the same. Just break down, rally up to the upside, break down, rally to the upside. And until we get into this corner here, where we'll most likely break to the upside. And that is going to be the start of this major rally towards 1900. 2000 and uh, 2100 and beyond that. But that is going to be several weeks from now. So it's going to most likely going to be the additional stimulus that is going to be pumped into the, to the markets, um, expansionary monetary policies from central banks that are going to uh, push gold to higher levels. We have been in a downward trend for a very long time now, but long term prospects for gold are very bullish. So I think this area here will at some point show us where we are going and when we basically are can buy this for the long run. 
So if you look at silver, it's a very similar story. Um, we have major resistant line here. We did get rejected from this resistant line only uh, three trading days ago. Um, and now we are basically broke down and are trading underneath the 50 and the 20 exponential moving average. Uh, these technical indicators are showing that we are going to go lower. And we could make a very similar uh, analysis for this market as we did for gold, as we have a major support line underneath here. So every time we get close to the support line, it's a buying opportunity. And when we get close to this upper line, it's a selling opportunity. So when, if you look at this market or this triangle here and the other triangle for gold, then it would, this one says that we're going to break out for silver before we break out for gold. And that is, Usually not the case. Usually it's gold that breaks out first and then silver follows. But but um, we'll mostly have a, you know, um, have a chance to buy it round here. And this is going to be 22.75. That is probably going to be where we are going to get our best entry for along with silver. So this is also in accordance with the Fibonacci retracement. If you look where that is. That is exactly at the same level. So the first Fibonacci retracement is here, 22.9. So this area here is going to be, something is going to happen right here. Are we going to rally up to the upside, break this resistant line and go significantly higher? That is a very plausible uh, outcome of this because there are too many things that are just going to happen at this price level. So it's going to be fascinating what happens next week. That's probably going to be next week, next week or the week after that. So let's look at um, platinum. So as you can see, we have broken down yet again today, down towards the 20 exponential moving average. Technical indicators for platinum are looking uh, very dreadful at this point. So we'll probably go lower. So we found support here at 998. And uh, if the MACD crossed the signal line, which is, it looks like it's doing, and uh, Stochastic is so uh, bearish and the CCI is bearish and so on, we'll probably have a go at the 20 exponential. And if that is the case, then we'll mostly also go lower than that. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement for this, we can see that the first Fibonacci retracement is here, 988. Then we have the 20 exponential. The next 50 is here as 961. And this is probably where we'll find some major um, support in this market. If this breaks, we're going all the way down towards 932 and the 50 Fibonacci retracement. So just let it fall as far as possible. When it finds resistant uh, support, you can basically buy this. Um, otherwise, just stay away from it. So let's look at Pallium. We can see that we're just doing more of the same. It's, it's getting quite uh, boring to make this analysis over and over again. You could probably look at the last 10 analysis I've done of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a pallium and they're all technically the same. So we already have the highs here at uh, 2.4. We have the lows here at 2.1 and we're right in the middle. So it's not, not a lot to say here until we basically get to these very lows or these very highs. It's not um, a trade I would consider or uh, basically recommend anybody taking because it's just a complete gamble. We can go to the upside, we can go to the downside, and there's no clear indication where we technically are going. So let's look at aluminium. So as you can see, this was also expected. We ran into major resistance here at 2.056. We created this uh, really nasty inverted hammer, and then we basically broke towards the 200, not to 20 exponential moving average. I think we are going to go a little bit lower from here. We found support here. Uh, sorry, we found support here at 2.006, and um, it is it's going to be choppy. 
technical indicators for, for aluminum are all over the place. So it is going to be difficult. However, if we get another candlestick right at the 50, 20 exponential, like we did only for trading days ago, then it's a buying opportunity. Otherwise, if we break the 20, then we're heading towards the 50 moving average. So let's look at nickel. So nickel rallied significantly yesterday, rallied again earlier today, and then broke down all the way towards 17 earlier. So this is not a trade, neither buy, sell at this point. We need to break down towards this level at 16.608 in order to enter this market for a buy. We'll probably get there. Uh, technical indicators are turning around. We are fairly overstretched. We're overbought at this point as well. So if we get down here, we have to fit 20 exponential right underneath. That is the buying opportunity. It will also be the previous highs are also at this area. So this will be major and support and uh, basically buying opportunity. So let's look at the sugar. We have broken significantly down today. So this wasn't a very encouraging sign on, on, on Wednesday, but it did on hold. Yesterday we broke down towards the 50. Today we broke even further down to almost to these very lows. So technical indicators for sugar are all over the place. So it is not a clear sign where we're going. The only clear sign that we have at this point is that this area here is behaving like fairly amount of support. And if this holds, then we can basically rally. We'll have a crossing of the 50 and the 20 exponential um, probably on Monday. And the last time we did that, uh, we rallied significantly. So this could mean that we'll break down also significantly. So just keep that in mind. So let's look at cotton. We can see that we have rallied yet again today, and then we created this inverted hammer. And usually what that means is that we're ready to go even lower. Technical indicators are not showing that, they are still bullish, but this inverted hammer here is almost a guarantee that we'll have another uh, lower uh, candlestick here on Monday, and then we'll head towards the 20 exponential. And that's a question whether or not we can manage to pull a buy off when we get to the 20 exponential. Otherwise, do not buy this here, do not sell this here, just wait until it basically falls towards the 20. So let's look at Kakoa because that is looking more interesting. Yes, we have broken the 20 exponential. We're trading and we're closed above the 20. This is a plausible buy at this point. However, be cautious, have a very, very tight uh, stop loss right underneath the 20 exponential moving average because if it turns around from here, we are going significantly lower. It can happen, uh, we can see that we have had these moves all in the past where we have rallied a little bit and then broke it down. So it is possible. Technical indicators are turning around for this commodity. And uh, if this we have an encouraging sign here on Monday, then I'll be buying into this. So let's look at wheat. Yes, wheat has some basically a mine of its own. So this is a fantastic uh, move for wheat. We have basically stopped here at these previous highs. So there's something with this price level here, which is not, well, I would consider it, I would love it if we could basically get past this price level because we were here, 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 here. We have been here several times before and every single time we have basically broken down really hard. But technical indicators are looking very positive for wheat. So, so, um, it is possible. We probably, if you have a pullback towards the 50 and that shows like it is supportive, then it's possible to buy into this. Otherwise, um, yes, that is about it. So hope you find this helpful. Uh, you're welcome to write to me on Patreon if you have any questions about this. Otherwise, a good weekend and good luck.